On this edition of Read with Ronald, I read God Don't Play by Mary Monroe. First published in 2006, God Don't Play is the third book in the sixth part God Don't Like Ugly series. God Don't Play follows Annette Good as she and her best friend Rhoda Nelson O'Toole and Rhoda's daughter Jade try to discover who is threatening Annette anonymously. God Don't Play is Monroe's seventh published novel and was her first novel to be a New York Times bestseller as well as Monroe's second number one essence bestselling novel. How I got this book, I had read the first book in the series, God Don't Like Ugly, and I knew I wanted to read the next book in the series. One day, I was in the dollar store, and I'm just walking through the dollar store, you know, getting stuff, getting what I need to get. And as I'm walking through the dollar store, I look at the, like, the spinning rack of books that they have in there, and I saw this. And I was like, hey, that's one of the books in the God Don't Like Ugly series. And I seen it was only $3, so I went and I bought it. And I didn't know which book it was in the series. So I was like, obviously, I don't bought this book. So I need to read the books in the series up to this one. And so it ended up being the third book in the series. So I was like, okay, good. So I can just get the second book and then I can get to reading this one. That's how I got this book. I saw it in the dollar store and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get it because it's $3 and I'm going to get it. So before we get into this, I want to go ahead and give a spoiler warning and a trigger warning. First, I'm going to do the trigger warning. This book has mentions of molestation, of abuse towards a child, of murder, and of stalking, and an attempt of self-harm. And also a spoiler warning. I will be going over the entire storyline of this book, the entire plot. So if you plan on reading this book or if you're interested in reading this book, Thank you for watching up to this point. Go ahead and turn it off now because after this, we're going straight into it. I'm going to talk about everything. So go ahead and click off. And if you're, maybe if you finish reading it and you want to come back and you want to see if you agree or disagree with what I have to say about it, feel free. Today is January 23rd. I am reading God Don't Play, which is the third book in the God Don't Like Ugly series. I'm on chapter nine. Um, so basically... In this book, it's been 10 years since the events of God Still Don't Like Ugly. So now Annette and Rhoda are like 45. Um, Rhoda seems to have recovered very well from her stroke. Almost as if it didn't happen. Um, and uh, her daughter Jade is 17 now and acting a little, a, a little grown. Basically Rhoda Jr. Acting just like her mama when her mama was 17. In this book, Annette is kind of like structured, kind of like a mystery, you know. Annette's been living the good life, you know. She's married to Pee Wee now. Her daughter Charlotte is nine. Now she, you know, she's living the good life. And her parents, you know, they seem like they seem like they're back together. She, her life just seems all together, and it seems like she's finally having a good life, like she's wanted to have all her life. But now, this book is kind of set up like a mystery, and so now she's receiving kind of like these, like threatening messages and like little packages and stuff basically somebody's like oh i'm going to basically ruin your happiness basically she's trying to figure out who it is and she done recruited rhoda which i don't know why she recruited rhoda because she know how rhoda get down but it is what it is my theory is that the person threatening annette is somebody who is really meaning to go after jade but because Jade is using Annette's address to send out mail and stuff and to receive mail that she have no business receiving as a 17 year old. I feel like Jade messed with somebody else's man and the man and the person who she whose man she messed with thinks it's Annette because all of the mail and stuff is going to Annette's house. And so she's probably targeting Annette and she really needs to target Jade. That's my theory right now. And of course, as usual, like this is the second book in the series where it's like it's, this time we're not getting the revision, it's rehash, but it's like the details, once again, are not matching up with previous books. Um, so I'm, I, I kind of feel like that might be a thing in this series where like at, as we get into every book, some of the details not going to match up with what was previously established, but it is what it is. Today is January 25th. It's about 2.30 in the morning. Um, I'm on chapter 30 of God Don't Play, and... So basically, this book has mostly been like, first, first there has been some rehashing of the previous books in the series, but this time the rehashing is kind of like sprinkled into the story. So it's not like last book where it's just like 
one continuous rehash going on for way too many chapters. But the problem with this rehashing is this rehashing, even though it's sprinkled throughout the book, it's still kind of like rehashing information that would kind of be annoying to read again if you literally just came from reading the other books. So, like, once again, if, like, you hadn't read the other books in a few years, it would be okay. But, like, because I just read the other two books, it's like, girl, this is information I already know, Annette. But, so, basically, um, Annette has a few suspects on who she thinks is tormenting her. She thinks one could be Pee-wee's ex, Betty Jean Poole. She thinks another suspect is her co-worker, Gloria Watson. And me, personally, I think one of the suspects might be Jade. But so basically, the stalker reveals that they want to take Pee Wee from it. Basically, they're going after her because they want Pee Wee to themselves. And so basically, Annette confronts Pee Wee. Um, Annette has been feeling very down about herself. She's been feeling very insecure about herself because she's getting older. And, you know, her looks are kind of like, you know... She's always been a little insecure about her looks, but she's really insecure about them now because, you know, she's aging, um, and she feels like Pee-wee's not always going to be there for her. She's feeling insecure about their relationship. She's feeling insecure about whether she can trust him or not because he, you know, he's known for gossiping and running his mouth, even though she claims she doesn't do it that much anymore. But she still feels like she can't trust him because every time she does tell him something, he doesn't tend to believe her. And so basically, now with the stalker revealing that they want Pee Wee and that they have proof that he's cheating on her, she's like, oh my gosh, you're having an affair with me. So basically, they're into it now. And um, her father has had a heart attack, so he's in the hospital. So basically, she's dealing with that. And she's dealing with the thinking that Pee Wee has an affair. Personally, I don't think he's having an affair on her. What I do think, I have two theories. Either one, the person is trying to break them up and it's going to fabricate some proof. Or two, the culprit is Jade. Or, actually, I have a few theories. The second culprit, the second theory is that the culprit is Jade and she wants Pee Wee to herself for some reason. And then my third theory is, is that the person, I still have a third theory, but it might not be true given the new information. But my, I still, I'm still holding on to the theory that the person is really meaning to target Jade because Jade keeps sending all her mail to Annette and so the person thinks that Annette is the one like to be targeting but really they want they mean to go after Jade I'm still holding on to that theory for a little bit but we'll see today is January 27th I'm on the 50th chapter of God Don't Play and I just want to say that um I no longer believe that the stalker is meaning to target Jade but accidentally targeting Annette I now believe the stalker is Jade because all of the evidence, Annette thinks it's um, a girl that Pee Wee used to fool around with, but all of the evidence points to Jade, because Jade is the only one with access to Annette's house like that. Jade always seems to be around when Annette is getting phone calls and gifts and mail, and literally just all the evidence points to Jade. And Annette, you know, she's so stuck on her insecurities that she's accusing Pee Wee, she's accusing everybody, she's not stopping to think rationally about the situation. I think it's Jade. But so far, she's accusing Pee Wee to the point that she and Pee Wee are separated. And she's possibly thinking about divorcing him because she thinks he's cheating on her. And so that's basically what's going on. But in my opinion, I think it's Jade that is the stalker. The reason why I think Jade is the culprit, there's two reasons why I think Jade is the culprit. It's either because she wants to get revenge on an earlier situation that happened in the book. Or because she just has a crush on Pee Wee. And she thinks that she can persuade Pee Wee to leave Annette for her. But Pee Wee's already made it clear he has no interest in Jade. But Annette feels like he might have some interest because of an earlier comment he made, like back in the day when she was a little bit younger. But um, the reason I think it might be Jade is either because she's interested in Pee Wee, has a crush on him, or because she is trying to get revenge for an earlier situation. And she wants to get revenge on Annette. And so those are my reasonings why I think that it's Jade. But we'll see. I got about 25 more chapters left, so we'll see if I'm right. It's about 2 in the morning. I just finished God Don't Play. Um, the stalker was obvious. And the storyline kind of just... Mm, I give it a 3.5. I give it a 3.5 because the stalker was obvious and there was some rehashing, but it wasn't as bad as
God Don't Play is the third book in the God Don't Like Ugly series. It takes place about eight to ten years after the end of the second book. So Annette wrote it in Pee Wee. They are like, they're in their 40s now. They're like their mid 40s. And of course, Rhoda has her daughter Jade, who's 17 now. And Annette and Pee Wee, they have their daughter Charlotte, who's nine. Some of the things that's happened since the last book, Annette has been promoted at her job to a position of like supervisor. Rhoda's recovered from her stroke and she and Otis are going through another rough patch in their marriage. Annette and her mom, Gissy Mae, they basically like, they're basically living the dream life at this point. Like they have everything they could ever want. They've come so far from the first book when they was poor and eating out of trash cans. Like life is good for them. The book opens with Pee Wee and Annette having an intimate moment over the phone. They're having an intimate moment over the phone because Pee Wee has gone to Pennsylvania to visit some of his relatives because it's around the anniversary of his dad's death. And so Annette is home alone. So after Annette gets off the phone, she goes to check the mail and she discovers that Jade has a package and Jade has ordered some items from an adult shop. So we learn that Jade is a little grown for her age because she's only 17. Annette and Jade are really close. Annette sees her as like a second daughter of course, because she has her close friendship with Rhoda. She's a bit rebellious. She got a wild side like her mom. She's basically like the mini version of her mom. And she takes advantage of Annette's kindness. Jade comes over to collect the items and she like basically begs Annette not to tell her mom. And Annette, of course, is like a big softie for Jade. So she's like, oh yeah, okay, fine. I won't tell Rhoda. When she checks the mail and she gets the package, that's for Jade. She also gets a letter in the mail. This letter is like a nasty letter. It's like telling, it's calling Annette a whole bunch of names and it's basically like putting her down. The letter reads, greetings, Miss Picky. You are in trouble up to your receding hairline. Who do you think you are? It's time for somebody to put you in your place. You are nothing but a fat, slimy, middle-aged, stinky, bald-headed, rusty-necked, black cow. Don't you know that by now, and you need to start acting like one and stay in your place. If you know what's good for you with your nasty, stinking self, you will crawl back up under that rock where you came from and stay there or else. And guess what? I'm going to make sure you do just that. Signed, me, your worst nightmare. So Annette gets this letter in the mail. She's like, oh my gosh, who would send me this nasty letter? Why would they do something like this? And so this is when I had my, like, my first theory on who this person could be. My first theory was this is somebody who is meaning to target Jade because we've learned by this point that Jade is wild and she's rebellious and she's kind of like she's like her mama like how her mama was at her age you know she's a little curious about certain things I figured oh this is a letter that's meaning to go to Jade because Jade to mess with somebody else's man and because Jade keeps having all her mail sent to Annette's house because she don't want her mama and her dad to know about what she's doing and what she's engaging in she want to keep up her little innocent image she's having all her mail sent to Annette's house so I'm like this is somebody meaning to target Jade but they're targeting Annette because Jade keeps having all her mail sent to Annette's house so they think it's Annette messing with their man so they're meaning to target Jade but they're really targeting Annette because they don't know any better and so that was my first theory going into this so basically she calls Rhoda because that, that's what Annette does Annette calls Rhoda when she gets in some trouble Annette tells Rhoda about the letter in the mail and we also learn that Annette received a black snake at her job a few days earlier but she thought it was just a co-worker playing a prank on it so she just played it off but with this letter in the mail she's like I don't think this is a prank I think somebody is really out to get me and so while she's telling um Rhoda about this these incidents we get some background info on Rhoda and what's been going on in her life because just like the last book, this book kind of like does some rehashing of the first book. And of course, once again, details are not matching up with the first book and the second book. But this book does some rehashing of the first book and the second book and basically kind of like gives us some details on what's going on in Rhoda's life. And so basically Rhoda's recovered from her stroke. She's recovered really well. But she and Otis are going through a rough patch in their marriage. That was because of Rhoda and the stroke and her changed looks. And because of like all the things that have happened to her and her body. And so basically Otis's best friend, whose name was Bobby in the first book, but now his name is Ian Bullard. So his name has changed, but it's basically the same guy from the first book that Rhoda had the affair with and had a secret baby by. So basically, 
he's come to visit because he's gotten into it with his wife and so he's come to stay with Otis and Rhoda and this book calls him Ian Bullard because they wanted to give him the nickname Bully for whatever reason but I'm gonna call him Bobby because that's what his name was in the first book. Annette suspects that Bobby and Rhoda have resumed their affair under Otis's nose because Otis and Rhoda are in a loveless marriage basically Otis be having an affair be having affairs on Rhoda Rhoda be having affairs on Otis they be having these affairs on each other but they get mad when they find out that the other one is having an affair on the other one and so basically they're like they having secret affairs but they know they don't love each other like that we also find out that Rhoda's children, um, she spoils Jade heavily because Jade is Rhoda Jr. And that Julian, her oldest son, has moved down to Alabama to be with the other family. And um, he is doing well for himself. We find out that he's funny, like the term that they use in this book. We find out that he's funny and he's in a relationship. And Rhoda's like, oh, I don't care if my son is in that kind of relationship. He'll, he's still my son. And... Um, but Otis is the one who's really not approving of the relationship. We learn like her parents are down in New Orleans. They're retired, which we learned in the last book. And we also find out once again that Jock is basically like completely out of his mind and he's unable to take care of himself. And I'm like, man, my boy Jock really fell off. I really liked you, Jock. And she just, she just did you so wrong. Annette tells Rhoda about the, the letter and the black snake. Rhoda's like, girl, this is a prank. This is somebody pranking you. It's like them chain letters I be receiving in the mail that tells me I'm gonna get all this bad luck if I don't keep the chain going. And so Rhoda don't take it seriously at first. And it's like, oh yeah, you're right, Rhoda. It's just somebody playing a prank on me. And so she go home and she gets a phone call. And the phone call is from some woman disguising her voice. And once again, she just basically threatens Annette. And it's like, oh my gosh, who is this threatening me? She's going to get to the bottom of it. And we get like an update on uh, her mama and her father. So basically, her parents are back together. They're doing well for themselves. You know, they've fallen back in love. So they're back together. And Gussie Mae, first of all, we already know Gussie Mae don't ever know how to talk to nobody. Because she just she just be really harsh with her words she really short and really harsh with her words but that's to be expected from her but basically like in the revisit is rehash we learned that annette wanted like a new car from her mama as a gift and her mama bought her a sofa a sofa that annette is grateful for in the long run because she's like this sofa is really comfortable but she we learned that gusima got her a sofa and told her be grateful for it and i'm like she was like, be grateful that you have a car because some people don't even have cars. And I'm like, Gissy Mae, come on now, girl. You got money now. You can buy your daughter a car, but you're going to get her a sofa instead and tell her be grateful. <laughs> I'm like, Gissy Mae, you ain't got no sense. Annette, she tells Rhoda about the phone call and she's like really worried and stuff about it being a stalker. And so basically, Rhoda's like, oh, well, if you need to spend the night, you can spend the night. And Annette's like, yeah, I think that's best because Pee Wee and Charlotte are supposed to be coming back into town tomorrow. So I can just spend the night with you. That way I can feel safe. She goes to stay over at their house. Barbie is heavily flirting with Annette because he and Otis are drunk. And Otis kind of like, he doesn't necessarily flirt with Annette, but he has like friendly banter with her. But Bobby is heavily flirting with her, which annoys Rhoda. And so Rhoda basically like, oh, she's just staying the night. Leave her alone. She's tired. And so that causes Annette to suspect that Rhoda and Bobby are having an affair again. Because she's like, why is Rhoda so bothered by this man flirting with me? Annette stays the night at Rhoda's house. And then the next morning... Jade comes in to talk to her. We find out that Annette really adores Jade to the point that she basically got Jade a job at her telephone company as a temp. And so basically Jade comes in and she tells Annette that she does not plan on going to college. Instead plans to start her life in the professional working field. And she basically asks Annette to talk to her parents and basically kind of like get them on board with the idea. But the way Jade is looking at Annette is kind of like weird. And so this is when I started suspecting that Jade might have been the stalker, but I was still holding on to my first theory, but Jade kind of got entered as a suspect because I'm like, why is she acting this way towards Annette? After Annette and Jade talk, Annette and Rhoda talk, Annette's like, hey, Jade don't want to go down to, um, she don't want to go to Spelman because that's where Jade was supposed to go with Spelman. She's like, Jade don't want to go to Spelman. She wants to stay home. And Rhoda's like, oh, that's perfect because I want my baby home. Um... 
you know, she's my only chance of having grandkids. So I really, you know, I really just want her to be home with me. And so I don't mind her wanting to stay home. Annette decides to invite Rhoda and the family over for a barbecue later that day when Pee Wee gets home. While Annette is preparing for Pee Wee and Charlotte has come home, this is kind of when we get into like how their relationship has gone since the events of the last book. So basically, Annette is really in love with Pee Wee, but she kind of feels like Pee Wee might be kind of like falling out of love with her. She's insecure about her looks, she's insecure about aging and getting older, and she's insecure because she feels like Pee Wee might be getting tired of her even though that man is always all over her every chance he get and i mean every chance he get he is always all over her and that starts thinking of who the stalker could be so she suspects it might be peewee's ex betty jean spool she be getting around with everybody so annette suspects that it might be her and she's mad because peewee chose annette over her she suspects it might be her co-worker gloria watson who is mad that annette got the promotion of supervisor over her because they've both been at the phone company for the same amount of time and gloria feels like she should have been the one promoted what also happened was that gloria's niece worked at the um telephone company and Gloria's niece was a horrible employee, so Annette fired her and replaced her with Jade. She feels like Gloria might be coming after her because of that, too. And me personally, even though Annette doesn't suspect Jade, I suspected Jade. I suspected Jade because the way Jade just treated Annette, the way she was talking to her disrespectfully, and the way she just would look at Annette and talk to her and just basically always talk about her weight and always put her down, I'm like, this little girl is way too grown she's way too grown so i sus i personally suspected jade but annette suspected betty jean spool and gloria watson peewee and charlotte come home and annette's like hey peewee i invited rhoda and her family over for a barbecue peewee like woman why would you do that i'm tired i don't feel like having all these people over at my house but basically peewee peewee agrees to it he basically goes through with the barbecue they have the barbecue and annette is really stressed out about the stalker Rhoda and Jade know about the stalker because Annette told them because she she tell Rhoda everything because Rhoda her best friend and Jade is Rhoda Jr. So she just as nosy as Rhoda was as a kid. So Jade and Rhoda know about the stalker. Annette says they're all like trying to put on like their best act to kind of like give off the vibe that nothing is wrong. And so basically while they're at the barbecue, this is when Jade really got on my suspect list because the way she was interacting with Pee Wee, it was not in the way that a girl would interact with a older man who was a family friend who like she sees as like kind of like a play uncle. She was interacting with him like a girl who had a crush on him. Like they were playing a, a game, a ball game. And at one point Jade smacked Pee Wee on the butt, but Pee Wee doesn't say anything cause it's Jade. And he's like, he doesn't take Jade seriously. And Annette knows that Pee Wee doesn't see Jade like that. She smacks Pee Wee on the butt. And when it's time to go, she's like, oh, I don't want to go. I still got to beat Pee Wee in a few more games. Basically, you know, trying to stay there so she could be around Pee Wee. So I'm like, this girl, this girl's acting like she have a crush on this man. That's when she really got on my suspect list. Because I'm like, nah. Another big thing was that. She always refers to Annette as auntie, but when she's talking about Pee Wee, she calls Pee Wee, Pee Wee. But the thing is, Pee Wee has been friends with Rhoda longer than Annette has. So Pee Wee, she should be calling Pee Wee uncle because he's been friends with, uh, with Rhoda longer than Annette has. And he's just as close with Rhoda as Annette is. Jade would always refer to Annette as auntie, but she would refer to Pee Wee as Pee Wee. So I'm like, why are you referring to, these people are grown, they are way older than you. And obviously you are treating Annette like your auntie, so why is Pee Wee not your uncle? While they're at the barbecue, Annette gets another phone call from the stalker, but Jade answers it. And Jade is like freaking out. She's like, oh my gosh, this lady said so much mean stuff about you and I'm mad. And when I catch her, I'm going to handle it. After Jade gets that distressing phone call from the stalker, uh, Rhoda is basically like, okay, Annette, you need to tell Pee Wee what's going on. And Annette is kind of concerned about telling Pee Wee because every time she tells Pee Wee something, he doesn't believe her, which makes sense because we've seen that throughout the series. When Annette told 
him about Rhoda murdering all those people, he didn't believe her. He thought she was joking and he thought Rhoda was crazy. When she told him about the abuse, at first he was like, are you serious? You know, you know, like how everybody was like, are you serious? Oh my gosh. So it makes sense for Annette to feel like Pee Wee wouldn't believe her because every time she's told him something important before, he's never believed her off rip. So she feels like she can't tell Pee Wee anything She's worried the marriage isn't going to last because she's getting older, she's aging. She feels like her looks are kind of fading and she feels like Pee Wee's getting tired of her. And so basically, um, Annette has a small reprieve from the stalker. She feels like they've left her alone because she hasn't received no notes, no phone calls. And so she feels like she has a reprieve, but she's like, she's like super stressed out. She's concerned, she's worried, she's basically let herself go physically like her appearance is like she feels like she looks a hot mess and she's like very short and snappy with everybody and so jade and rhoda they decide to invite her out for lunch to kind of like get her mind off things and while they're out for lunch jade is pointing out like all these flaws about annette she get to talking out the side of her neck like she usually do jade starts talking about annette's appearance and she's like oh auntie you need to you know, these clothes aren't really doing nothing for you. And auntie, you need to do something about all them bald spots on your head. And I'm like, Jade, what the world? Why are you talking about your auntie's bald spots in public? Like, why are you embarrassing her in public like this? And basically pointing out all of Annette's flaws in public in front of everybody. I'm like, that is so embarrassing. Why would you do that to somebody you care about? But it's around this time that we get some information on like, Annette's younger siblings, Lily Mae, Amos, and Sandra. Lily Mae is doing well for herself. She kicked her children out the house. Um, Amos and Sandra are still living in Germany. They're in the military. And Annette really still doesn't have a close relationship with them like she would want. But she's really close with Lily Mae. And then we also get more information on like Rhoda and her marriage with uh, Otis and how like when she had her stroke, Otis didn't really take care of her like that. Like he was kind of repulsed by her. He didn't really respond to Rhoda how she would have liked him to when she was going through it. Rhoda tells Annette, hey girl, you need to tell Pee Wee because if you don't tell him, I'm going to tell him because this is getting ridiculous. And so basically Annette has, has had a reprieve from the stalker, but the reprieve doesn't last long. She gets a phone call from the stalker that, and basically the stalker reveals that she wants Pee Wee to herself. And so Annette, you know, she like runs through the office to try and catch Gloria in the act, but she realizes it's not Gloria. And so since she realizes it's not Gloria, her only other suspect is Betty Jean Spool, who is Pee Wee's ex. And so this is where we learn that like Annette and Betty Jean kind of have a rivalry and they're kind of like friendly rivals because they'll like joke about how Betty Jean gonna steal Pee Wee from Annette one day. When her and Pee Wee would get into it, Annette would go and tell Betty Jean, hey, Betty Jean, come collect your man. Basically, you know, like joking about like the situation and stuff. And I'm like, Annette, you you a little too comfortable with this lady. Why are you joking around with this, this lady who is your man's ex? Why are you joking around with her like that in that kind of context? That, cause now look at you, now you're insecure and now you're feeling like she's trying to steal your man from you. This is why you don't do stuff like that. Because the stalker reveals that they want Pee Wee, Annette suspects that it's Betty Jean after all. And so she starts trying to compile evidence against Betty Jean. Annette goes home and she gets into it with Pee Wee. She accuses him of cheating on her. And Pee Wee's like, woman, what are you talking about? And they going at it They and they getting into it. And Annette is like, Pee Wee has this guilty look on his face. Like he wants to tell her something. And while they getting into it, Annette gets a phone call from Gussie Mae. And Gussie Mae, Lord, Gussie Mae ain't never learned how to talk to nobody. She like, girl, your daddy done had a heart attack. And so basically Annette's like, what, what? Daddy done had a heart attack? Are you okay? Is he okay? And Gussie Mae like, girl, he had a heart attack. Of course he not okay. What is wrong with you? And so basically Annette and Pee Wee's argument gets tabled and they go to the hospital so that Annette can see how Frank is doing. Gussie Mae, you know, she talking out the side of her neck. Oh, oh, he just old and his heart giving out. You know, I'm like, Gussie Mae, girl, get your life together. Every time I try to root for you, you make me not want to root for you. I feel like 
Every time I try to give Gussie Mae a chance, she do some mess that make me mad at her all over again. And it's like, Gussie Mae, I want to root for you so badly. I was mad at you in the first book. The second book, I was kind of softer on you. But this book, you just acting a straight up fool. Frank has had a heart attack. He's in the hospital. Jade decides to drop some information on Annette, basically revealing that she is pregnant. So Rhoda Jr. all over again. She is pregnant and she wants to go to a clinic to take care of it. And we find out this is not the first time that Jade has been pregnant. And we find out that this is not the first time that she has ran to Annette to have it taken care of. And we also find out from like a flashback, we find out that Jade is also funny. And that she bring her lover to Annette's house and have intimate acts in Annette's guest room and when Annette caught them in her guest room they like continued on in front of her they just continued on like she wasn't there and when Annette tried to stop them they like Annette you tripping like they, they just didn't have no respect for Annette in her house and so basically like this is when I was like okay this is when I had another theory I was like okay so maybe the stalker is the lover that Jade had in Annette's house and she's like Maybe she's doing it because she want to get revenge for that situation. But that was kind of more of like a far-fetched theory. And we never heard about the lover after that again, except for like she left Jade to go back to her boyfriend. And so basically, while we're still like in the flashback, getting information on Jade and like what's gone on with her before, Pee Wee and Annette, they get into it again over Jade and her spending too much time at their house and you know he's like i would like to have peace and quiet in my own home with just me my wife and my child and i would like to be able to invite my friends over to like watch the game and stuff without having to worry about this little girl running around in these super short shorts showing off everything to all these men and so basically that upsets annette because she feels like peewee might be looking at jade in a way that's inappropriate and Pee Wee's like, I would never look at Jay like that. Jade is a child. Annette and Pee Wee get into it because of his comment that he made about Jade. And so during her inner monologue, Annette says something that really just... <sighs> Every book so far, I have... The first book, I was super pissed off with Gussie Mae because I'm like, how could you not know about what has gone on in your household for a decade? And Tati kind of like, we kind of had a discussion and she's like, well, you know, Gussie Mae wasn't there. So it's like, and I'm like, I know. So I kind of, she kind of had to like talk me down from that. So in the second book, when Annette tells Gussie Mae what finally happened to her and the abuse that she endured, you know, Gussie Mae at first is like, are you serious? Don't play like that. But then Gussie Mae ultimately believes her. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give Gussie Mae some grace. Cause you know what? At least she wasn't them, one of them mamas that turned a blind eye cause she needed a man. But then we get to this book. I'm gonna read it word for word. So basically Annette is, you know, she's recapping the confrontation she had with Pee Wee back in the day. And she's basically telling the audience about how Jade be, um, be playing with the Lord and how she be doing stuff. She'll knowingly sin. And then she'll be like, oh, well, it's okay because God's gonna forgive me anyway. That's not how that works. You, you don't knowingly sin and then be like, well, God's gonna forgive me anyways. Because no, you're taking advantage of his grace and mercy. Chapter 38 of 73. Again, what does Annette have going on for 73 chapters? But basically, Jade had a warped sense of what religion was really about. Just like old Mr. Boat, right? Some Sundays he would abuse me just before he left the house to go to church. And with Madeer across the hall in her own room, getting ready to go to the same service. He thought that it was all right to abuse me as long as he prayed a little harder and longer when he got to church. This paragraph pissed me off at Gissy May again because you know what with the first two books you could make the excuse that Gissy May was not ever home she was never home so you could make that excuse in the first two books that Gissy May was never home to know about the abuse and because Annette would not tell her she could not have known but this this paragraph this pissed me off at Gissy May because I'm like Gissy May you mean to tell me this man was abusing your child right across the hall from you while you were home and you still 
did not know. You still did not know. You had no suspicion, no nothing. You didn't think to go in there and check on your child while she's supposed to be getting ready for church. When I would be getting ready for church on Sunday morning, my parents would come and check on me and see if I was ready to go. <laughs> like, they would come in my room and see how much more time I was, it was gonna take me to get ready. So I'm like, guess babe, you never went and checked on your daughter. You. You didn't question where Mr. Boatwright was in the house while you was getting ready for church? You mean to tell me you was in this house while your daughter was being abused and you didn't hear nothing? You had no suspicion, no nothing? Are you see You right across the hall? Are you... Guess he made the fence for not knowing gets weaker and weaker with every book. That's all I'm gonna say. But basically, we get all this information because Annette, like, to kind of, like, showcase how grown acting Jade is and to kind of showcase how Annette really lets her slide with a lot of stuff. So she and Pee-wee go home and then they resume their argument and Pee-wee's like, why are you accusing me of having an affair? And Annette is like, because I have been getting all these letters and stuff and somebody said they're trying to steal you. So are you having an affair on me? And Pee-wee's like, girl, you crazy. I'm not having an affair on you. But Annette doesn't believe him. And so basically they into it. They start going back and forth. Annette is like letting loose all of like the feelings from like the trauma she's experienced from Mr. Boatwright. And so she feels like, of course, she's worried about aging. And she's like, oh, you probably trying to leave me for a younger woman. And Kiwi's like, the only person I have eyes for is you. And Annette is like, I don't believe that because every man I've ever been with in my life has, you know, always, they've always had more than one woman. And, you know, basically just release unleashing all her trauma on peewee and peewee gets very upset about that because he's like first of all if you don't if in case you forgot i was abused as a child too and i told you that number one and number two i keep telling you i only have eyes for you and annette's not believing him and i'm not surprised that annette doesn't believe him when he says that peewee keeps saying that he only has eyes for annette and he's not interested in any other woman but number one she's traumatized because she's been abused since she was like seven years old by this very older man and then in her adult relationships levi cheated on her jerome put his hands on her and basically got super upset when he found out about her past and peewee himself was using annette as a go-between girl like he would be with a girl and then when he broke up with that girl he'd go get with annette and they would do what they do and then he'd leave annette so i'm like peewee you can't really be mad at annette for feeling this way about you because you've shown this to her. She was with you experiencing it when you were doing it to her. So you can't really get mad at her for feeling like this. The big issue in this argument is that Annette says that she and Pee Wee have rarely discussed what she went through with Mr. Boat right. And I'm like, that's why you're having all these insecurities with him now, because you haven't discussed your trauma with Pee Wee. You haven't discussed what it was like to go through that. And so it's like, because you haven't discussed these things with your husband, because you haven't discussed how this has made you feel and how this has made you like look at men, of course y'all are arguing about this now that there's an issue because you haven't discussed this. You haven't come to a place where y'all can, you can feel like you can trust your husband. Now, granted, I didn't believe that Pee Wee was having an affair on Annette. I didn't believe that he was having an affair on her, but I wasn't surprised that they were arguing about this and that she felt that way. Because like I just said, y'all haven't discussed it. And so basically, um, you know, Annette and Pee Wee get into it and basically Jay drops by to kind of cheer Annette up and she gives her this white rose. She gives her this white rose and she's like, oh, I gave you this white rose because I've heard that they like stand for peace and I want you to have peace in your life. And I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, Jade, white roses do mean peace, but they also mean death. White roses also mean death. And so, I'm gonna get to that later. Jade is like, Auntie, I need you to help me take care of this. I need you to help me take care of this. And Annette is like, Jade, my father just had a heart attack. You are really not my priority right now. And Jade, of course, she don't... She gets upset about that, but it it it, it has to be what it is. But she gets upset about it. And so Frank recovers from his heart attack. And so Annette goes over to see him after he gets home from the hospital. And while she's over there visiting, Gussie Mae receives a phone call from the stalker. And she gets super upset. 
and basically she's like, Annette, tell me what's going on. Who is this girl? Why is she saying this stuff about you? You need to tell me what's going on so we can find out who it is and we can go beat her down. And Annette's like, uh, mama, I'm not trying to beat nobody down. And Gussie May like, well, you might not trying to be beating nobody down, but I'm gonna beat somebody down. Keep in mind, Gussie May in her like 80s talking about she gonna beat somebody down. Annette decides to go with Rhoda and Jay to the hair salon to get information because she suspects it's Betty Jean that's trying to steal Pee Wee. So she decides to go to the hair salon to kind of try and like get some information out of the other women at the hair salon where Betty Jean works to kind of like see if Betty Jean then like slipped up at the mouth and let something slip so she can get some evidence. And so the minute they get there into the hair salon, you know, they all joking around and you know, when the when they walk in, you know, everybody get all quiet. Rhoda's like, oh girl, we not gonna be here long. So once we get done, y'all can go back to gossiping about us like y'all was doing before. And, you know, they get to joking around, you know, trying to, you know, catch up on life and stuff. And Jade, Jade puts Annette's business out there. She's like, oh, auntie has a stalker. It's this person that's trying to steal Pee Wee from her. And you know, basically just put all the business out there, basically straight up embarrasses Annette in front of all these women in the shop. And I'm like, Jade is not loyal. Jade is not loyal because you are not on code. You are not on code, ma'am. Why, when you walk into this salon, you put all of your auntie's business out there like that? Jade put the business out there and so they get everybody talking and basically Annette finds out some details that she does not like. And so she go home and she confronts Pee Wee again. She's like, are you cheating on me? Yes or no? Pee Wee's like, I am not cheating on you. And Annette is like, oh, but why all these women at the shop then told me this, this, this about you? And Pee Wee's like, why are you listening to gossip over your own husband? And he gets pissed off and he walks away. He runs, he runs off. He's like, when you get your life together, Annette, call me. And so basically he leaves and he goes spends the night at his barber shop. And basically him and Annette are into it again. And Charlotte's like, where's my daddy? Like, where's my daddy coming home? You know, Charlotte's starting to notice that something is wrong. But Annette, she's trying to make it seem like nothing is wrong between them because she don't want Charlotte turning out like Jade. The reason Annette feels like Jade spends so much time at her house is because Rhoda and Otis are always into it. And they create such an unhappy environment that she feels like Jade just wants to get away from there. And so she doesn't want Charlotte feeling that same way, which is why she's like, very soft on Jay and why she don't want to tell Charlotte nothing about nothing. And so basically Annette goes to uh, once again talk to Rhoda because Rhoda's her best friend. And so she talks to Rhoda and Rhoda's basically like you need to confront Betty Jean and you need to make it clear that you're gonna fight for your husband. And Annette's like well if he's cheating on me I'm just gonna divorce him. And Rhoda's like no you need to fight for your man because it's more than the man. It's the life. It's the principle. You need to make it clear that you are not the one to be played with. And so basically we get Rhoda stars going on about how Otis had an affair. She talks about how her dad had an affair on her mom. And I'm like, not David too. Not David. Why you ruin David like that, Miss Mary? And so basically um, she starts going off, getting, getting into how all these men in their lives had affairs and how even Annette's own father left her mother for a white woman. They talk and basically Rhoda's like, you need to fight for your marriage because we can't have this. They come up with the plan to go and confront Betty Jean with the evidence that they have against her. And they decide to do it the next day when Annette gets off from work. So Annette goes to work and you know, she's at work and she, she thinks about it rationally. And she's like, you know what? I'm not going to confront Betty Jean. If Betty Jean wants my man, she can have him. I'm not going to be sitting up here tolerating a cheater like Rhoda does. While she's at work, like, thinking rationally, Jade brings her some coffee and then Annette gets a package. And she opens the package and it is Pee Wee's underwear. And she knows it's Pee Wee's underwear because they are raggedy and they are all like torn in all like different places and uh she's like these are the underwear i've been telling him to throw out for so long these are his underwear i know these underwear anywhere and she's like oh she's like oh this is the evidence that i need to prove that peewee is messing with betty jean because how else would she have gotten his underwear and i'm like annette I'm like, Annette, think rationally. This is Pee Wee we're talking about. Pee Wee done had how many women in his bed, including you, before y'all got married? Do you really think Pee Wee would be stupid enough to leave his underwear at another woman's house? This is Pee Wee we talking about. He, this is not his first rodeo. This is not his first time around the block. He's not stupid enough to do something like that. But basically, Annette is like, 
oh, this is his underwear. This is proof that he's cheating on me with Betty Jean. And so she gets all riled up. Well, she's all riled up. Jade comes in with another package. She's like, hey, you got this package in the mail? Annette doesn't even want to open it. So Jade opens it for her and it is horse poop. It is literal horse poop in the box. And Jade is like, oh my gosh, it's horse poop. Annette's like, oh, that's this is it. This is too far. And now you sending me horse poop in the mail. This is too far. So she just, she gets all riled up. She gets Jade riled up. She gets Rhoda riled up. They go after work to confront Betty Jean. So they go over there to confront Betty Jean. And Annette roll up on Betty Jean Porsche. Betty Jean like, what you doing over here, Annette? And Annette's like, oh, I know you sleeping with my man. And you need to leave my man alone. And Betty Jean's like, girl, I don't want your man. I don't want Pee Wee. I don't want Pee Wee. I got over Pee Wee a long time ago. I got me a new man. And so basically Betty Jean is like, comes from like a very complicated family background, like almost as complicated as Rhoda's family background. Basically her brother is a drug dealer and some of her cousins like are thugs and criminals, but some of her us, other family members are like really upstanding citizens in society. Betty Jean has her brother at the house and that thinks they're cooking dinner, but they're not cooking dinner. <laughs> They're cooking drugs, but Annette is naive, so she don't pick up on that. Betty Jean has her brother, Lester, at the house. She also has her boyfriend at the house. Lester's like, Annette, what are you doing over here? He starts calling her out her name and stuff, and he basically tells her to, um, that she needs to get off the premises because it's about to go down in a few hours, and unless she want to get caught in a crossfire, she needs to uh, exit stage left. And he also says, and when you get tired of that punk peewee and you want a real man in your life, you know where to find me. I'm like, Lester, how are you going to call her out her name and then be like, but if you also, but if you want something else, you know where to find me. I'm like, no, no. Basically, Lester, Betty Jean, and the boyfriend, they all go off on the net. And Annette, she leaves. And Rhoda's like, okay, so is it her? And Annette's like, yeah, I think it's her. But she don't want to admit to it because her boyfriend's standing like right there. So Annette goes home. She pack up Pee Wee stuff. And when Pee Wee come home and he sees the suitcases and he's like, "You, I feel like you having a nervous breakdown and you really don't need to be going nowhere. You need to get some help. Annette's like, I might be having a nervous breakdown, but I'm not the one leaving. You are. And so she puts Pee Wee out the house. After she puts Pee Wee out the house, she, a few hours later, she gets a phone call that Lester and Betty Jean have been killed in a shootout at the house. She gets the information from Scary Mary and Scary Mary come over being nosy. And while Scary Mary is over there being nosy, Annette gets a visit from this man. And like the way Annette describes him, he's like, he he has on very tight clothes. He's very built. He's very handsome to Annette. And she's kind of like, ooh, who is this? The man reveals that his name is Long John. He works for this lady. And Scary Mary like, hold on, you work for so-and-so? I don't appreciate her doing business in my neck of the woods. This is my area. She's like, you take yourself on and go do business elsewhere. And basically Long John is like, oh, I was just sent here to spend some time with Annette. And Annette like, I didn't order no man to come spend time with me. Scary Mary chases him off. And Scary Mary's like, okay, no, we need to get to the bottom of this because who would be sending you an escort? Annette is like, maybe it was a, a mistake. Scary Mary's like, it can't be a mistake. He had your name. He knew, he, he said he was here for you. And so basically Annette kind of like makes it up in her mind that maybe it was an escort that was scheduled weeks in advance by Betty Jean. And so maybe he's just now showing up because it's the scheduled date because Scary Mary reveals to Annette that, oh, you know, people be scheduling them type of get togethers out all the time. I have people scheduled for Christmas and that's months from now and that's like oh yeah it's just it's just um it's probably just a late thing from betty jean but it turns out not to be from betty jean because annette gets another letter in the mail that basically says oh i'm still here i'm not dead it's not betty jean and Annette's like oh no we gotta figure out who this is annette goes over to Wee's cousin house because he's staying with his cousin she goes over there and she runs up on him she runs up on him and she starts beating on this man and Wee's like why are you beating on me and Annette's like, cause you cheating on me and I know you're cheating on me. And Pee Wee, Pee Wee gets fed up. He's like, woman, you don't believe me. And because you don't believe me, I want a divorce. He's like, if you gonna continue on like this, I want a divorce. And so basically they're like, okay, we can get a divorce. Annette goes to talk to Rhoda and Jade again, fill them in on what's going on. Rhoda's still saying, you need to fight for your marriage. And Jade is like, you need to get a divorce. And every other sentence out of Jade's mouth is, you need to get a divorce. You need to get a divorce. When are you divorcing Pee Wee? Are you going to divorce Pee Wee? When are you divorcing Pee Wee? Annette decides to go to this bar on the other side of town where she doesn't know nobody. And this man hits on her. And Annette is like, no, this uh, this not what I want. I'm married. And so she leaves. And as she's driving around, she kind of like, it's just driving around randomly. And she ends up getting in a car accident. And she runs over this horse. And it's a rental car because her car's 
tires were slashed, but she's okay. She's shooken up about the crash and she calls Rhoda to take her home. Rhoda takes her home and Annette checks her answering machine. She has all these missed calls from all these women who are accusing her of sleeping with their husbands. And so basically the stalker has now basically spread this rumor that Annette is sleeping with their husbands. In the final letter, Annette receives this picture that's cut out in the shape of a coffin of her and Charlotte and their faces are crossed out. And she says that it's a picture that she took with Rhoda and Jade. And Pee Wee was the one who took the picture. Annette wants to confide in somebody. She wants like somebody to come over and spend time with her because Charlotte is at Gussie Mae's house. Pee Wee, of course, is at his cousin's. So she calls Jade. And so she calls Jade. Jade comes over to like spend time with her. Jade is like in the kitchen getting something to drink. Annette, you know, she, she's gotten something else in the mail for Jade. So she decides to put it in this yellow backpack that Jade has been carrying around this whole time in the book. So Annette decides to like put the mail in Jade's backpack and she discovers the stationery that the notes have been printed on. And she discovers some other clues that reveal that Jade is the stalker. And Jade comes back and she's like, oh no, 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 no. Auntie, no, don't look in there. No, 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 oh my gosh, no. And so Annette is heartbroken. She's like, oh my gosh, Jade, it's you. You're the stalker. You're the one trying to break me and Pee-wee up and Jay's like you weren't supposed to find out this way I want Pee-wee why can't you just disappear you're so fat and ugly and why would anyone want you and basically Annette is heartbroken basically Jade is revealed as the stalker I knew she was a stalker I'm gonna go into all the clues of how I knew Jade was a stalker first the way Jade talks to Annette Jade talks so disrespectfully to Annette she always is talking about her weight always talking about her looks always talking about all this mess about Annette and basically Annette just writes it off as oh Jade is young you know she don't know how to talk yet she don't have no sense yet the second clue the way Jade addresses Annette over Pee Wee which I've already discussed the third clue and this is when I started suspecting Jade was the barbecue the way Jade acted at that barbecue was like a girl who had a crush on Pee Wee she was not acting like a girl who sees this man as like a older male family friend. She was acting like a girl who had a crush on this man. The fourth clue, the white rose, because like I said, a white rose also signifies death. And because I knew that, I'm like, that was really what like was like, oh yeah, it might be Jay. Cause why, cause a white rose signifies death. It might signify peace, I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm like, I know for sure it signifies death. And also Annette would always talk about how Jade would look at her strangely and look at her with like these cold looks and stuff like that. I'm like, She's looking at you like that because she's a stalker. She does not like you like that. The big clue that was like, oh yeah, it's Jade, was Pee Wee's underwear. Jade has a key to Annette's house, so she can come and go as she please. The only people with keys to Annette's house is Annette, Pee Wee, Gussy Mae, Jade, and Rhoda. Pee Wee's not going to send his underwear to Annette to torment her. Annette not going to send a mess to herself. Gussie Mae has no reason to want Pee Wee and Annette to break up. In fact, she wants them to be together. She loves Pee Wee. Rhoda is Annette's best friend, and she is also wanting Pee Wee and Annette to stay together. So that leaves Jade, who had, who was the only other person with access to Annette's house and able to get a pair of Pee Wee's underwear. And she would have to know, and the thing is, a stalker would have to know that these was Pee Wee's underwear. She would have to make sure that Annette would recognize that these are Pee Wee's underwear. She, so she would believe it. And I'm like. Come on, Annette, put the pieces together. But the final clue, this picture that's cut out in the shape of a coffin of her and Charlotte and their faces are crossed out. Annette, who are the only people with copies of this picture? Like, once again, the only people who would have copies of the picture are Annette and Pee Wee, Rhoda and Jade, and Gussie Mae if they gave her a copy of it. Annette and Pee Wee are, even though Pee Wee and Annette are into it, they're not going to do this. Rhoda is her best friend, so she not gonna do it. And Gussie May, once again, has no reason to do this. So that leaves Jade. Of course, when Jade is revealed as a stalker, I'm not surprised, because I'm like, I've seen this coming since the beginning, since basically the barbecue. So Annette is heartbroken. She's like, oh my gosh, it's Jade. And so she decides to take Charlotte and go down to Miami to visit Lily May. And she don't tell nobody that she's leaving. When she gets down there to Miami, Lily Mae, she's at work, but she like rushes home. She's like, Annette, what is going on? I check my answering machine from like, from work. And I have all these missed calls from, from Gussie Mae, from Pee Wee, from Rhoda. They all want to know where you are. They 
you know, just ran off to Miami. And the only reason they even found out was because Charlotte called Jade and told her that they was going to Miami. And so basically, Annette is like, Charlotte, you don't talk to Jade no more. And Charlotte, of course, does not understand because Annette's not willing to explain anything to Charlotte. She runs off to Miami. She talks to Lily Mae. And then Rhoda calls and Rhoda's like, if you're not on the next flight home, me and Pee Wee are coming down there to come get you. Pee Wee is talking about having you committed because he feels like you are having a nervous breakdown. And at this point, I'm going to have to agree with him. And so Annette's like, well, Rhoda, have you talked to Jade? And Rhoda's like, what does Jade have to do with this? And Annette's like, have you talked to Jade? And Rhoda's like, no, I haven't talked to Jade. You know, she's very upset because you have run off to Miami. And so Annette's like, well, when you talk to Jade, you can talk to me. Long story short, after Annette talks with Lily Mae and Annette explains the whole situation to Lily Mae, everybody convinces Annette to return on the next flight. She basically got down there and flew back the same day. I'm like, that's a waste of money. She gets home and Gussie Mae and Frank are looking out the window. And so when she gets there, they try, they confront her. They're like, girl, what was you thinking? Why would you run out of Miami like that? They want an explanation out of her. And Annette is like, I'm not talking to nobody until I talk to Pee Wee. And her parents are like, well, we're your parents. We had you before. Pee Wee got you. So you owe us an explanation first. And me personally, I'm like, yes, yeah, she does owe you an explanation because you are her parents. But Annette is grown and she wants to talk to her husband first. And Annette has left your house. She's grown. She has her own family. Her priority is her husband, her child. Y'all have fallen on the list of priority, Gussie May and Frank. She don't owe y'all explanation first. Basically, Gussie Mae, Frank, and Scary Mae being nosy. They want to know what's going on. They want to know why Annette is acting out and acting the way she is. And Annette's like, I'm not saying nothing until I talk to Pee Wee first. And Annette puts her foot down and she's like, okay, well, if y'all not going to leave, then I'm going to leave. So she takes Pee Wee into the kitchen and she talks to Pee Wee and she confronts Pee Wee and she's like, are you sleeping with Jade? And Pee Wee's like, why would I sleep with Jade? She's a child. And Annette is like, because Jade is the one who's been sending the letters and the phone calls. She's the stalker. Are you sleeping with Jade? And Pee Wee's like, no, I'm not sleeping with Jade. They reconcile. Annette is like, I want you to come back home. Basically, after he reveals that he's not interested in Jade like that. And he says the same thing I say. Because Annette brings up the underwear. And Pee Wee says the same thing I said when it first came up. He's like, do you think I would be stupid enough to leave my underwear at a woman's house that I am sleeping with? And I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Because... I'm like, Annette, this is not Pee Wee's first rodeo. You were with him when he was going back and forth between you and these women. You were with him when he would go be in a relationship. Then after he leave the relationship, come and be with you and sleep with you. And then once he got done sleeping with you, he'd go back to another relationship. Annette takes Pee Wee back. Rhoda comes over steaming mad. And Annette suspects it's because, you know, she's mad about Annette running off and not saying nothing. But Rhoda comes over to the house steaming mad and she's like what did you do to my baby my baby said you trying to accuse her of being a stalker and how could you believe that it would ever be jay jay would never do that to you she loves you how could you do that to me and so basically they get into it annette is like rhoda it is jade you know, and she basically tells Rhoda what she learned. And Rhoda does not believe her. Rhoda is like, how could you say that? How could you believe that it would be Jade? It, it can't be Jade. Jade's too innocent. And basically, Annette starts, you know, revealing all the information that she's ever hidden from Rhoda. Like, oh, well, Rhoda, your daughter was pregnant, has been pregnant several times. She's uh, gotten rid of several of the babies. She's slept around with so many men. It makes no sense. She's even slept around with some women. Rhoda is not trying to hear it. So she and Annette get to tussling. They get to tussling. They get to throwing down in the in the kitchen. Rhoda is beating on Annette. She is throwing stuff at Annette. She break a plate upside Annette's head. She try and then she goes to grab a fork to try and stab Annette. And Annette basically is like, Rhoda, it may be you, but we not. I'm not having this. And so basically, Annette restrains Rhoda, and Rhoda. You know, she's like, let me go, let me go. And then that's like, Rhoda, I want you out of my house. So everybody come rushing in and they're like, what's going on? It sounds like y'all tearing the house down. And that's like, everything is okay, but everything's not okay because she bleeding. Rhoda's bleeding. But Annette doesn't understand how Rhoda is bleeding because she, as far as she knows, she didn't put no hands on Rhoda. She kicks Rhoda out the house. They break up their friendship again. Pee Wee reveals to everybody else that Jade is the stalker. And that's why Annette and Rhoda was throwing down. <laughs> and Gussie Mae makes this, uh... She makes this comment. She's like, why would Jay want you? You this old fossil? You all old and stuff. Why would she want you? 
and Pee Wee, you know, he like, he basically like laughs about it because that's what he's been telling Annette the whole book. And Annette, you know, she's feeling real bad about herself. And so she basically like kicks everybody out the house and has some time to herself in the bed. And so then Pee Wee comes in later and Pee Wee's like, hey Annette, how are you feeling? Annette's like, I don't feel well at all. I feel so stupid. I feel so dumb. And she's like, I can't believe I accused you of having an affair on me. And Pee Wee's like, it's okay. You were going through a lot. And while he's basically comforting her, you know, he he doing what he do. He all over her. Like I said, it did not make sense for Annette to believe that Pee Wee would have an affair on her because every time Pee Wee is with Annette, he is all over her. This man loves you, Annette. This man has loved you since y'all was kids. Since he first laid eyes on you, this man has loved you. He was always around you as a kid. He was always trying to get your attention as a kid. And then y'all got and then when he finally got his chance to be with you. He took it. And then, of course, he ran back and forth between you and every other woman. But then he eventually got it together and married you. So I'm like, and it makes no sense for you to believe that this man would cheat on you. Because since he first met you, he has been all over you. They make up. Annette gets a phone call from Rhoda the next day. And Rhoda's like, Annette, I'm really sorry, but I need you right now. And Annette's like, Rhoda, I don't want to hear nothing you have to say. And basically, Rhoda's like, I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have put my hands on you. I shouldn't have tried to stab you. But I really need you right now because if she, you know, Annette's like, well, what's wrong? And Rhoda's like, I'm at the hospital. Jade tried to take her life. And so Annette rushes over to the hospital. She and uh, Rhoda make up. Rhoda reveals that she was indeed having an affair with Bobby. And basically, like, after they leave the hospital, she will be taking um, Bobby to the airport so he can go reconcile with his wife. Rhoda feels just, like, very undesirable because she feels like Otis does not want her like that. She feels like they're only just together for the comfortability of it all. And you know, she says she was just resuming the affair with Bobby because she wanted to feel desired. Another reason why Annette suspected that Jade was over her house so much was because she had learned about the affair between Bobby and Rhoda while they were down in Jamaica visiting uh, Otis's family. She caught them having an affair and talking about um, their son that they had together that died. Rhoda basically reveals that she and Bobby were having an affair and basically that he's basically going back home to make up with his wife and that the affair is basically over. They go into Jade's room to see how she's doing. Jade wakes up and she looks at Annette and she like scowls at Annette, but then she's like, where, where am I? Who am I? I don't know who I am. And Rhoda's like, oh my gosh, my baby has amnesia. She don't even know who I am. And I'm like, no, nah, that girl faking. She faking cause she's caught and her attempt to end her life did not succeed. So now she's faking amnesia to try and get out of it. After that happens, they all leave the room again to give Jay some time to rest. And so Annette, she goes to the bathroom and as she's coming back from the bathroom, she decides to sneak to Jade's room just to check on her and basically kind of like, you know, just to see her because she, you know, she's feeling bad that Jade don't remember who she is. But she's also like at the same time, like she's like at the same time, this is somebody I care about. And I feel bad for her, even though like she's done this horrible thing to me and it's going to hurt me for a while. And so when she go up there, Jade up there singing. She's singing I'm Every Woman by Shaka Khan. Annette, she like clear her throat and Jay runs back to the bed and she hop in the bed and she like, she start putting on that show again. Oh, oh, who am I? Where am I? And Annette just stands over the bed looking at her like, like basically like, girl, you ain't fooling nobody. And so basically after Jay get out the hospital, she miraculously recovers from her amnesia and her parents decide to send her down to New Orleans to live with her family. And they're using the cover story that uh, Jade is going down there to go to school. Jade calls to apologize to Annette and to tell Annette that she just thought that she could take Pee Wee from her because she thought Pee Wee liked her like that. And she's basically like, I seen the way he always looks at you with so much love. And I just wanted that for myself. And so I thought maybe if I took Pee Wee from you, he would look at me like that. And the next, like, he looks at me like that because he loves me. He's my husband. And you need to find somebody your age who will look at you in that same way. Basically, she gives her a piece of her mind. And basically, Jay's like, well, auntie, do you forgive me? And Annette's like, yeah, I forgive you. This is gonna hurt me for a long time. It's gonna take me some time to get over, but I forgive you. And so basically, Jay goes down to New Orleans and Pee Wee's like, who was that on the phone? A telemarketer? And Annette's like, yeah, a telemarketer trying to sell me some bull crap. And so basically, that's how the book ends. They're good with each other and that's how the book ends. 
I rated this book a 3.5 because Annette's insecurities and how she feels about herself really carry this book. They really carry this book and they really carry the storyline and they make, they help make a lot of why Annette is acting the way she does make sense. Even though I'm like, Annette put the pieces together. It's not Gloria or Betty Jean. It's obviously Jade, but it's like, because of her insecurities, you can understand why she's acting the way that she's acting. But the reason I got a 3.5 is because even though her insecurities are carrying the book, once Jade is revealed as a stalker, her insecurities are like, they're not addressed. It's like, she just is like, oh, well, it is what it is. It's like the insecurities are no longer necessary because the plot needs to move along. And I'm like, no, you need to address this because you need to address this so this doesn't happen again. It also got the 3.5 because it was some rehashing of the first two books, but it wasn't as bad as God still don't like ugly. It was so obviously Jade that, that was the stalker. It was so obvious it hurt. So that's why it got the uh, the 3.5 for me. I'm like, I'm like this. This was better. This was a little bit better than God still don't like ugly, but it's still like kind of on level with it. Like, in my opinion, God don't like ugly is the best book in the series so far these next two they were good but they just don't they don't capture the same feel and the same charm that god don't like ugly had like god don't like ugly was really good and god still don't like ugly and god don't play have not reached that same level that god don't like ugly was on like it really like god don't like ugly really set the bar high for the series and god still don't like ugly and god don't play have not reached that bar thank you for tuning into this video today if you liked it go ahead give it a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you next time